coaches, it was a little late and they're not used to their, their bedtime. So they want to listen to their recording. So, um, all right. We're so excited to welcome Kobe Mitchell to the Soar Nation team call tonight. Kobe actually was the first trainer that actually trained Emma or myself. And I know he doesn't consider himself like our trainer because he, but he did really did have a great impact on me personally. Um, it was the first Beachbody corporate event I went to and he taught me about the leader roadmap and his teaching style is amazing. He's one of those people that just comes off and you can tell he really cares about you as a person and he's not just talking at you. Um, He's an amazing trainer. He has an amazing family, two gorgeous little girls, and an amazing wife, Ashlyn, and I'm lucky enough to be on the market council in Utah with both of them. Um, he's also mentored a lot of the top coaches in the business. He has worked for years in multi-level marketing companies, so he's agreed to talk to us about um, being organized and consistent in this business and how it can help you stand apart from the rest of the crowd. Um, and so he's also elite ranked at 179 right now. Um, and he has kind of transferred from the training aspect to the coaching side of things. So we were excited when he came and was part of the market council now. And instead of working for Beachbody, he's working with us all as coaches and him and his wife work their business together and they are rocking it and they do it from a place of just genuine love and being real. They're amazing at sharing their stories. Um, and they're just some amazing people. So I'm so glad to have you on the call, Kobe. And thank you so much for agreeing to teach our team. We're so excited to learn from you. So I'm going to hand the time over to you. And then if it's okay with you at the end, if you have time, if they can ask any questions, um, we would love that. But if you don't, that's fine too. So, Thank you so much, Kobe. Thank you, Chelsea. That was a, a great welcome, and I appreciate that. And um, Emma, um, I appreciate that too. Yours was much shorter, and I'm glad that it was. But um, <laughs> I'm I'm super. I, I'm it's it's great to see. Obviously, I get to see Chelsea regularly, and and more regularly actually than, than most coaches, which is cool. But um, I have some really great memories of of uh, time spent with each of you. And okay, so here's what's cool. Okay, so so. All of you guys on this team, I want you guys to remember that the night that I met Chelsea, this was actually super cool. Um, so I live in, in Orem, Utah, south of Salt Lake, and I drove on this big, long tour from Utah to uh, Pocatello to Idaho Falls to Bozeman to um, geez, Kalispell, Montana to Coeur d'Alene, to Spokane, Washington, and then flew to Phoenix. That was all like, like, anyways, it was a crazy long tour, and it was um, a few years ago. It was a number of years ago. But when I went to Pocatello, I went to a coach's house, and there were two coaches, okay? And I don't even remember the, co the name of the coach who hosted, but the other coach was Chelsea. And in as much as I was in Pocatello, that's where she was from, as you guys know, um, she drove from Bountiful, North Salt Lake, so it was like a two hour and some change drive, a two and a half, probably close to three hours drive for her to get to me in Pocatello. And that's where really everything began for Chelsea. And if you think about where she is now, it, it's remarkable. So I want each of you to remember that there's an opportunity that's before every, before, in front of everybody. Like, even though you might have three coaches on your team, that's where Chelsea once was. That's where Emma once was. Okay? So, the way that they get there is not some magic secret sauce that they've bottled and they keep in a jar in their basement, you know, under the, you know, the spare bed. That's not it. They've been super consistent over time. They've simply been super consistent over time. So, again, it's not anything magical. It's not anything... Um, over the moon, it's just being committed and being, being committed every day to doing what it takes. So I want you guys to remember there's no secret sauce. There is only the commitment to day in and day out, um, take care of what it is you need to do in order to be a successful coach. So with that being said, um, so th there's a few things that are going to help everybody to be really consistent across the board um, with organizing your peeps, okay? So this is something that Ashlyn and I do uh, to organize who we're working with because 
we're working with a lot of people from prospects to uh, from prospects to um, diamond coaches. Okay. And, and so it's hard to keep track of things, but we want to be able to keep track of things in a way that will make sense in a way that will um, allow you to build and move people from one category to the next. So I'm just going to walk through you through with you very simply what we do. And I do this and you can see right behind me is a whiteboard and it'll be kind of a trick for me to be able to, to, to write actually, because I'm, Anyways, I'm going to bring you closer to where I am. But um, I'm a very visual person, and I've got this is the this is the third whiteboard that we have in the house. This is the spare to the spare to the yeah. Anyways, you guys get it. So um, I I have two whiteboards up in the kitchen where the wife and I work, where Ashley and I work, and that's where that, I have it out there intentionally so I can always be watching what's happening in the business. So if it's on my mind, if I'm seeing it, it's on my mind. If it's on my mind, it's something that I'm, that I'm internalizing and thinking about and not to the point of stressing or worrying, but, but to the point of, of putting my mind to work in a very intentional way to see things grow. And I'll talk more about that. Okay. So, um, this is not rocket science. Um, that's, that's not who I am, but this is something, this is just how we do. Okay. So, I'm going to give you guys, this is the fine print, okay, little disclosure. You're probably not going to be able to read anything that I write. <laughs> I'm the classic chicken scratches kind of a guy, okay? So I'll talk you through each category and what it looks like, okay? So let's see if I can turn without pulling you guys with me, okay? So I have this big, huge whiteboard. I'm actually going to bring it a little bit closer. This is going to be super awkward and super weird, but anyways. Okay, so the first thing that we do um, at the top of the whiteboard and we're going to have columns here, multiple columns. Okay. So the first one is going to be prospects. Okay. So can you guys, yeah, you can't even read that. Okay. So that says prospects. Okay. <laughs> For those of you who can't read it, which is everybody. Um, that's, that's what Ashlyn always has out, um, on the whiteboard. And, and here's what's really important about that, okay, is this is for people who, this, cat, this column is for people that are potentially going to be challengers in the next challenge that she's going to have that month. And, and typically, um, she runs about two challenges a month. And there's, there's sometimes where that goes from two to three, depending on the influx of people. But what she does is she always puts on this list, the people on prospects, the people who she's talking with right now going through the five step invitation process but here's what's really important is she puts people's names down okay um there and then what she does is she goes over to the next actually truth be told is she puts prospects but what she'll do is she'll write down like today's okay so it'll be like four january okay so what she'll do it'll be it'll say like prospects for january because she's going to put people on this list who She's just going to say, these are people, I don't know if they're going to work, but I'm going to pencil them in for the January 4th challenge. That's really crappy. You guys can't, you can't even see that. So, um, the point is, is you've got this column I here. I can see it, just so you know. You're you can? Doing, yeah, we're okay. good. <laughs> so, here, we'll just go like this. <laughs> okay, for January, okay? So, that's the next challenge group, okay? And she's just saying... I'm going to put people down and I'm just going to visualize and kind of get my mojo and my energy going to, to visualize these people being in there. I don't know if that's actually going to work out, but she's like, I'm not going to focus on all the reasons why they're not going to do it or all their excuses. I'm just going to say this person, I'm just going to like put my intention to work on this person and I'm going to list them right here like this. Okay. So that's one really important thing for her because that's allowed her to let go of any reason why people aren't going to work, why they're not going to be in a challenge, why they're not going to order and just say, I'm going to just, I'm just going to just put my mind to work. And every time I see that list, I'm going to say that person's going to be in that group. Okay. So there's a difference. And, and I don't want to, I want to point this out. There's a difference. And, and this is the psychology of it because this principle applies across the board and all the columns we're going to go through. Okay. But in this particular case, what's really important to be able to know is there's all the reasons why they're not going to do it. But, and, and each of us can find that, but what you have to be able to do is just focus on this is who's going to be in the next group. 
Okay. So if that person doesn't work out, then she's got the next one, which is going to be on, what is that? That would be like 12. Is that, I don't even know if that's, anyway, we'll just call that the next, the next group. 12 January, if that's when she's going to have it. So if people don't work out here, or they say, I need to go to the next trip, then she just moves them right here on this spot. Puts them right there, okay? So always know, and I would actually say on, on like a rolling like 60-day period, you should know when your next challenge is going to be, and then highlight the potential ones. If you get like an influx of challengers in, in one particular week, it's like, okay, I've got a lot of people interested because this program's going to come out, for instance, with Tony's new program in February. Isn't it February when it's going to come out? Okay, got some head nods. Okay, good. So I think so, either that or early March, either one. I can't remember. Okay, so if you've got an influx of people who are interested in that program because you're promoting it and talking about it, then you might have to call an audible and open up a challenge, you know, in between weeks or whatever that is, okay? But that's the first thing is to be able to identify which weeks you're going to have a challenge group, okay? That's the first column. And I'm just, for <laughs> demonstration purposes, you're getting like the, 72 point font on my whiteboard so you can see it. Okay. All right. So the next one that we're going to go over, okay, the, the, the next category, and, and this is super important as well. Once you get people in, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, do you guys understand why that's important to be able to see every single day? Because when you see it, you're not worrying, ah, they're going to make it. You're saying they're going to go in that one. Just know they are. Like, I'm going to get that person in that challenge group. Okay, so that's the real point behind the whiteboard. Does that make sense? Okay, so next category that we put down on this, okay, is we're going to put challengers, okay? So these are people who are currently in challenge groups, okay? These are people who are currently in challenge groups, okay? And then what's really important is, is right on their name, okay? Name right here. And then if you want, you can, you can say, okay, this is when they started their challenge. So that's going to be for January, okay? So that way you can note when they started, okay? Now, here's what's cool about this. And this, become, this is also going to become like a, flow, uh, like a flow chart, if you will, okay? The next category beyond challengers is going to be um, a potential. Okay, I'm just going to put, I'm going to have to get potential. Coach. Okay, or you could write future coach on the next group. So you're going to have all of these people who are in challenge groups, okay? And what you're doing with this is you're trying to identify, okay, we've got all these challengers, but who is acting like a coach that we could potentially pencil in here, okay? So if you've got like this person and this person, this is Pat, okay, let's say this is Pat and this is Larry, okay, and this is Sue. Okay, you're like, these people are rad. And this is why they're rad, okay? It's not just because I like their names because Sue is like this really rad name and I had this friend from back home. That's not it. It's because Sue is one of two things, okay? Um, or a combination of two or both. So number one, there's Sue is active in the group, okay? She's active in the group. What that means is she posts consistently. She is... Um, commenting on people's posts she's encouraging okay like those are two huge measures of her success okay so let's just let's let's just note this down here underneath here okay is activity that totally sucks as a red oh my gosh seriously okay green let's give green a shot i don't know that's gonna work yes okay so their activity level okay so that's the first thing, okay, is you're going to measure their activity level. Again, posting, commenting, are they encouraging? Are they, you know, following the middle plan and so forth? I mean, are they, are they engaged? That's a super important part of this. So the second measure is as to a challenger, if they're going to be a good potential coach or a good future coach, it's going to be their transformation. Okay? Now, here's what I recommend, Okay is that each of you, okay, those of you who are in Chelsea's and Emma's team, this is what I would recommend you guys being accountable to them on, okay, is when you guys have a weekly call or whatever it is you're going to do, okay, whenever you have contact with them, this is what I recommend, is you account, you be accountable for which challenges are acting or, 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 or future coaches, which, which challenges are acting like coaches 
based upon their activity level and based upon their transformation. Now, the transformation could be something like they're losing inches, they're losing pounds, their skin is cleared up. Um, their clothes are fitting differently. Their digestion has improved. It could be any number of things. It could be any combination of things. It could be one. It could be many. But the point is, is that they're having that. Now, if they're not both, meaning if they're not having, I don't know, can you guys see that? Maybe I need to lower that down here. If they're not both, that's okay too. Because we all know that people sometimes have their body, people's body responds, people's bodies respond better in their second round than they do their first round. Sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes people have like a killer transformation in round one, but once they go into, um, but they might be quiet in round one, even though the transformation is crazy, but when they go into second, their second round, they might jive with somebody different in, the, in, that second, in that second challenge group, right? They might have better chemistry, so all of a sudden they become more active. Or because they've gained a little bit of confidence because of their transformation, now they're a little bit more active, okay? So it doesn't have to be both. It can be one or the other. Okay. Yeah, I've but seen these that happen the, tons of times where people will be in one group and they're super vocal and then another one and they're not at all. And it's just who they mesh with and who they're inspired by. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and it's, everybody's different, but, but here is, here's, I think a real key behind how you get more of whatever that person is doing and how you get more out of everybody else when they're doing well. Okay. So here's, here's a super, super critical piece here is when you have people who are active and they have a transformation, okay? If someone's posting or if someone's, if, they, if they're posting and they're encouraging, give them a shout out, a public shout out in the group and say, I wanna recognize Sue because she's been supportive, she's been encouraging, she has been resilient, and all those things help us as a group to receive better results. So I want to give Sue a huge shout out. And Sue, whether you know it or not, you're acting like a good coach. All the good coaches that I know start out as a challenger just like you. They love the process. They love the interaction. They love the people. And they want to give of themselves. Great job. Love what you're doing. Okay? So you've given her public praise for being active. It's like, oh, wow. Guess how Sue is going to feel. She's going to feel excited. She's going to be motivated. She's going to be recognized. So she's going to do more of the same. Okay. Now, the benefit to everybody else is now you've given a clear example for all the other people in the challenge group. You've given them a clear example as to what they need to do in order to get a shout out from you. Right? Now they have an example. They're like, okay, if that's how Sue, if Sue gets a shout out because she's uh, you know, active and encouraging, I want to do the same thing. I want to get a shout out. Cool. So, that's just giving them an example. You're reinforcing, you know, behavior that you want that's desirable and challenge you because you know it's going to yield better results. So that's what they're going to do. Okay. Same thing. If someone posts a transformation week one, they're like, guys, I'm down, you know, three pounds, but I'm down, you know, five inches in the first week. I cannot believe this. I'm so excited. Same thing. Give public recognition. Hey, um, Larry, great job. So excited for you. It's because you've been active in the group or it's because you've been diligent with the program. I hope that you keep this up. Just stay consistent and uh, let, the, let the process work. Trust the process. Great job. And the, some of the best coaches that I know have, start with their own transformation first, and then that moves on to um, bigger and better things. So great job. Keep, keep focused. So happy you're in the group because that gives hope to other people in the challenge group. Okay? So now the same thing happens. People see that shout out and they think, Man, I'm going to work hard because I'm going to get a shout out from Chelsea. I want to work really hard because I want Emma to call me out. Okay. Does that make sense? So again, two measures right here, activity level and transformation. Could there be more? Yeah, there could be more, but those are primary measures that a challenger could transition to be a coach and be a future coach and a really good one at that. Okay. So again, super important. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of zoom back out, I guess. Um, yeah, that looks horrible, but you guys get the idea, right? Challengers, Potential coaches, future coaches, and this is this. I mean, the, the mentality on this list has got to be the same as the as the prospects list, okay? And that is, you got to make sure that you look at these people who are on this list, Pat, Larry, and Sue, and you're just like, man, you're seeing them be a coach. You're seeing them run a challenge group. You're seeing them code in a challenge group with you. You're seeing them transition. Okay, you're seeing them become emerald. You're seeing them become a success starter. All those things. 
you're focusing your mind and you're giving good intention on what you want from those people on that list. Okay. Now, next list after that is going to be new coaches. Okay. These are people who've transitioned over here. Okay. So you can see this is a pipeline challengers, potential coaches, potential coaches to new coaches right here. Okay. Now, um, that's, that's going to lead to the next one. Hold on. I dropped my, my paper towel. Just kidding. Okay. So, um, the next, so you got all that. So the, so the last column right here, new coach. Okay. You got that. I'm going to erase now because I need more room. So the next column is going to be really key and important. Well, the next few are going to be important, of course, but, um, Maybe I should just ask this question right now before I continue on. Any questions on this particular one? If anybody's got like this itching, burning question. Okay, copy that. So we're moving on. So next column, after new coach, right? New coach. So we've got new coach right here. Okay, the next one's going to be, okay, um, success club point earner can you guys read that success it's, a, it's totally abbreviated success club point earner okay so here's what this is about okay obviously we want people to become success starters because i mean the data shows that people who become success starters are going to be way more successful earn more in the business etc cetera, etc cetera, okay so you want to be able to say okay these are my new coaches but now what i want them to do is i want them to become success club point earners Okay, because we all know there's that place in between signing up and being a coach. Hold on. Deanna has a, a question. Did he say it is all of <laughs> I do this on a I do this on an Excel or on, on, not on Excel. I do this on a um, on a whiteboard. But it just looks really big <laughs> right now because I'm writing really big. And you can actually separate it in quadrants and say, okay, here's my prospects, and down here. These are my, my, my other categories. You can split it in, in like that as well, or you can just simply turn it landscape, okay? Turn it horizontally and use it that way. But um, I, 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 rather than doing on an Excel spreadsheet, again, because I'm a visual um, learner, because this is out in front of me, because I want to be able to put my mind to work, I always want to be seeing this whiteboard. So that's why I have it on a whiteboard, okay? So how you organize it up to you, but that's how I do it. So. Um, new coaches, successful point earners. There's always that. There's always that place, right? From somebody signing up and from them becoming a a success star or even a success club qualifier. Okay, there's always that middle point where they earn points. And so, what you want to be able to do is, if you've got people who um, you got your new coaches here and you're going to be training those people, but if you have people who um, are on month two, month three, and they're earning points but they're not qualifying, you want to track them right here. Okay, on that list, because what that's saying that that's, a, that's I mean the people who are not qualifying, it's a great indicator. And then right, the next category is going to be success club qualifier. Okay, and then the one after that is going to be um, diamond, future diamonds, and that ends the categories. Okay, that should say future. All right, so now so so those are all the categories. Okay, those are all the categories. No more, no less. Okay, so um, again, you can see the pipeline here. There's gonna be people, new coaches, and then there's gonna be people who will be earning points but can't quite get there. Then there's gonna be the people who are consistently earning successful points or qualifying for successful. Here's what's really important is you always know which coaches count towards premier or elite and which ones don't, or which ones are your are, are PS to you or a second generation. Whether you're gonna color code that or just follow the top, People on the top of the list, people who count for premier or elite, and the people who are from previous years who count towards ATV, or the people who are, you know, second generation to you in categories, that's all good. You, you manage that however, whatever, in whatever way works best for you, whatever way speaks, speaks best to you. But um, here is why this is important to have these categories, so nuclear, like successful point under success to successful qualifier. There are certain skills, okay, in my experience, that coaches who consistently qualify for success club have that coaches who earn points consistently don't. Okay. So let me say that again. There's a difference in skill set between successful point earners and successful qualifiers. 
okay? And that skill set is found, I believe, in their ability, the qualifiers have the ability to successfully take people through the five-step invitation process, okay? So that's the difference between someone who consistently qualifies and someone who consistently earns points, is their ability to, to, to personalize the five-step invitation process and get people there, which means obviously they're going to be you know, engaged in the three vital behaviors with finding people, with finding prospects, with inviting consistently every day and so forth. I mean, that's all super key, okay? But what, again, the big difference is, is their, their, their skill, okay, we can say, it, I mean, the big difference is going to be skills in finding people, inviting people, but certainly getting through the invitation process, you know, um, you know, forming them is also a skill that, that is the difference. In fact, let me just write a few of these because I think, I think they're going to be pertinent. Okay. So the, again, we're talking about the skill set that needs to be acquired in order to become a success club qualifier. Okay. That's going from, from this category over to this one right here. Okay. From here over to here. Okay. So finding, Okay, forming, inviting, and that's going to be the five step, okay? And um, I think those are core key skills that you've got to be able to help your, your, um, your, your successful point earners figure out, okay? Because if you talk with them, and for instance, if you've got somebody who's stuck as a, a, a consistent point earner who, do, who never doesn't qualify, you've got to be able to dig in and find out, okay, so are they, um, you, and I would recommend you actually using the, um, the, the BAT or some version of the BAT that, 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 that resonates with you to find out if they're finding people consistently every day, if they're forming people consistently, or if they're spending too much time forming people, or if they're just going right to the invitation and inviting them without forming them properly. There's a lot, of, I mean, there's, there's a natural and a interpersonal skill that's required to find, to form, and to get people through the invitation process. Agreed? Okay, so each of you have got to be able to measure that, but ultimately, um, if you can help them improve on that, then you're going to get them to the category of success club qualifier consistently. Now, I'll share with you one of the things that we, that we have, um, we've done in order to help people um, become qualifiers, okay, is we're heavy, heavy, heavy in using the five-step invitation process to the point where we say, okay, before you, like, let's just say Sally Sue signs up as a coach and she wants to, um, and, and she wants to be able to invite a whole list of people, okay? We're going to figure out who that list is, okay, and then we're going to say, okay, I want you to put together three invitations on um, step two, option three. Okay, that's how, that's how we've got it. I mean, we've got obviously steps one through five, but we've got certain variations of step two, which is the invitation based upon if they're like a Facebook friend of someone we know personally, if there's someone that from Instagram that reaches out or that we invite, whatever that is, there's variations of that. So what we say to the new, to the new uh, coach is, I want to see the invitations on, that, that you're going to send to these people Step two, option three, and I want you to give me an example of what you're going to say, okay? Because you want to prove their invitation before they send it out because it might be a disaster. It, it might be just be horrible. Or it might be super sweet but very, very shy on the end with inviting, okay? So you want to be able to read that because once, they, once you read that and you offer suggestions, it's not like a matter of like, this is ridiculous, like who would send this invitation? That's not what that's about. It's simply a matter of saying, this is where I would tweak it, and if you send this in, in this way with this tweak, you're gonna have more confidence when you send it because I've already looked it over, and I think this looks good. So send this on. They're gonna have more confidence when they send it. It's still going to be scary, but they'll have more, it'll be less scary. They'll have more confidence, okay? So that's one thing that I would do, and, and that served us very, very, very well this year as far as previewing coaches' invitations before they sent them, because all of a sudden you're teaching them how to fish, and you're teaching them how to successfully personalize the invitation process to them before they send it out, well, to the, to the prospect, but in, in their own words, in the way that they say it, okay? So next thing is, okay, the mama bear just showed up. Come say hi. She's in here, like, totally, like, dorking off and, like, 
trying to distract me, which she's pretty good at. Say hi to everybody. Hello. This is Mama Bear, everybody. I don't want to. Stick your head in here, honest engine. Come here. So let me just brag on this sweet little girl right here. So this, this sweet woman, she's like my rock, my anchor, my everything. And so anyways, if you follow us on Facebook, you'll know that Ash and I just went to Salt Flats, Bonneville Salt Flats, and we renewed our vows yesterday and it was incredible. So go to Ashlyn's Facebook page. Go I to, actually just posted a picture, but I did not say what we were doing. Okay, so I just told you what we were doing, and you're not going to see that from the pictures, obviously, because she didn't say as much, but that's what we did. It was rad anyways, so yeah, that's because we're getting, um, our anniversary is the 8th of January, and we'll be 16 years, so kind of an early anniversary kind of thing, so anyways, thank you. Yeah, she's like, what's wrong with you? There's no dance space here, which there literally is not. There's like six inches of space right here, so anyways, thank you for the congrats and the well wishes, everybody. All right, so um, any... So, so that's what I recommend as far as helping new coaches or, or successful point earners moving to successful qualifiers categories, helping them become more skilled at inviting, get in, dig in with their invitations, know what they're saying, know how they're personalizing those five steps. And um, yeah, that's, that's a huge thing to move them over to that category. Okay. So once you build that category, in fact, let me just erase this super quick. Once you build the, um, the list and, and here's the thing is every week you should be updating this. And I actually have sucked pretty bad in Q4 at doing that, <laughs> to be honest with you. Because um, we've had just a ton going on, which is no excuse, but that's just, that's just what's happened. Honest engine. So, but our business is better when we do this. Our business is way better when we do this, for sure. So, um, okay. The last category is going to be um, your future diamonds. Okay, so here is, here, here's, a huge, here's a huge thing, okay? Your future diamonds are going to be your consistent, successful qualifiers. They're going to be your success starters, okay? And so the transition from, from um, challenger or from, from successful starter to, to diamond is really key and, and hinges upon their ability to upgrade challengers and become coaches. So that goes back to this goal we talked about earlier, which is helping your successful qualifiers identifying who the really great challengers are so that they can do this. So I would, I would suggest taking your successful qualifiers, even if you've got one successful qualifier, make sure that you have them account for this week to week. So that way you know who is doing really well and where their coaches are skilled and where their coaches are not skilled. Because if you know that, you can help influence that behavior. Okay. So, um, once you get your qualifiers identified, then you can start saying, okay, these are my, for instance, you can say, okay, these are my qualifiers, but I'm going to take these two right here. Cause I know those two for sure are going to be the next diamonds. And then you have the conversation. Okay. Let's talk about what this means to become diamond. This is where you are currently. You've got three coaches on your right. You've got one coach on your left. Let's talk about what this, what you need in order to become a diamond coach, what this means for you in the business, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can begin identifying who their challengers are who their um, new coaches are, who their success point earners are, and who their success qualifiers are. Thank you. Um, so that's how we do this. That's how we, how we did it, so, or done it last year. So um, how we did it, how we have done it this calendar year. So um, we've got Ashlyn's, Ashlyn's a lifetime one star. I'm a diamond. We've got two other diamonds, and of course, we're, we're still left on one star and as much as we're just like all over the place, but that's just the nature of business. So um, I'm going to open it up for questions now because there's a lot of content and I want to make sure that you guys understand this. So I'm going to Chelsea. Thank you, Kobe. That was awesome. And I know like I love the visual aspect of it and I saw the comments going while you were doing this because it's, I think it's so easy in this business to know what you need to do, but to actually, do it. There's a bridge you need to, like there's a transitional bridge. You can think you're doing the right things, but until you actually go write it down, pen to paper and see it, then you, it's really easy to pinpoint what you're not doing. And I think this is huge for that. Like I think it's going to help so many people on the team because they may just be missing one category, but when you're missing one of those categories, it affects everything else. And so I think this was a great training and um, do, I'm going to let you guys ask questions. First, if you guys have any questions on how he sets it up or trains his coaches, now would be the time. No dumb questions, honestly, just fire away.
but seriously, not all at once though, because I'm feeling overwhelmed right now. <laughs> I have a question. Can you hear me? Hi, Veronica. Hello. Hi. What's up? Thank you so much. That was great information. Um, I had a question. If you are personally stuck in the future, it might be cutting in and out. Hold on. Can you hear me okay? My internet's been a little sketchy. I we got it. You. Okay, sorry. Stop. If you are um, currently stuck in the future diamond category and have been there a while, what? how do you get out of that? How do you get out? <laughs> are you saying, Veronica, that you are that future diamond who's, who is not yeah. there yet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, sorry, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Tall, like, okay, no shame in asking that question at all. And this is not a reflection in any way of Emma's leadership or whatever. I'm a big, big, big believer that everybody has their own journey. Everybody has their own journey as a challenger, um, dealing with food, dealing with exercise, dealing with self-care, dealing with personal development and their maturation of the business. And also their confidence level in all of those categories I just mentioned. Okay, so there is, that, that's why we can never ever judge somebody based upon their rank because we just, we don't know all the facts. If you don't know all the facts, you, you, you simply cannot judge. So there's no judgment in that. So in order to move from, okay, um, Veronica, do you, consistently, um, do you consistently qualify for Success Club? Yeah. Okay. And okay, so um, I'm gonna ask like a series of questions. This is just to simply just like diagnose like where you are. Okay, so um, Emma, take some notes on the questions that I ask, just so that or trust you too if you want. But just just take notes on this. Okay, so um, okay, so Veronica, you qualify for a success club every month. Okay, um, what what's your average success club points each month? Five to six. Five to six. Okay. And, um, how many of those people, how many of those people are challenge packs? At least two, right? Yeah. Two, usually two or three. Okay. And how many challenge groups do you run each month? Usually one. Okay. And of those challenge groups, how many continue on to a second round? Probably 30%. Okay. Maybe so 50. Okay. So that, that's of note. Okay. Like, would you mean ordering Shakeology another month? Exactly. Yeah. Probably less than 50%. Okay. So, um, do those, does those, um, two to three people, are they in a group in, in a, like a bigger group with like multiple, like other challengers? Or are they just in like a small group of like the four of you? Um, yeah, usually we have between, you know, maybe eight to 10 in our group. Okay. So it is a smaller group. Okay. Eight to 10. And then of those eight to 10 on average month to month, how many of those are new, uh, challengers? Just the two to three? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And where do the other ones come from? Um, Just my success, challengers? my success partner or previous challengers. So I usually okay. combine my group with another coach. Okay. So do you know how many coaches um, or how many, how many challenges you're upgrading um, each month to, to coach or how many coaches you're sponsoring each month? One or less. One or less. Okay. So give me like since summer. Okay. Let's just say since summit, how many, how many coaches have you um, sponsored? Since then, month to month, you know, I'll talk your head. Um, I've had some go inactive, but I would say I would say six or so. You probably in the past about six, six months. Okay, so okay, so yeah, I would certainly agree with like Jen for sure that Veronica, you did a great job. Okay, <laughs> but I want I, so I I want to be really clear. This is not a matter of me like playing hardball with you. I'm just trying to like assess and understand where you are. So, okay. So the first thing is, is, um, when it comes to 
the um, the challenger when you've got that you've got retention of about thirty like you retain about thirty percent or so thirty to fifty percent of your yeah. of your challengers month to month. Um, let's say the thirty percent move on into a, a second round in order Shakeology. What I would suggest that you do is you find a way to socially engage the people. Okay, meaning you've got to be able to have in, in, in this group, people have got to be converted to Shakeology, to the nutrition plan, to the meal plan, to the trainers. They've got to love those. They've got to love those things in order to remain. Okay, but they've also got to be able to, to love the people that they're around. So there's a social conversion that takes place in the challenge group. So what I would recommend, and everybody write this down if you haven't already, but you've got to be able to have a social conversion into each challenge group where people become friends and they become, um, they, they share things. And, and the, probably the best way for people to, to, to become friends, and, and if you've got primarily women in this, is you've got to make sure that people are vulnerable. You've got to give people opportunities to become vulnerable in your challenge groups, okay? And you've got to be able to do that consistently in the challenge group. And it's not like you have to have like a, okay, okay, everybody, it's your daily Brene Brown vulnerability moment. That's not it. But you've got to be able to talk. I mean, if anybody who knows Brene Brown, you know that, that she's like the, mo like the Yoda of shame and vulnerability. But ultimately, you've got to be able to increase that vulnerability because that creates bonds that creates a connectedness. And if they're socially connected to people, they're going to find a way, if they can't afford it, they're going to find a way to get into the second month. Okay. Second part of it is you got to make sure that they do all they can to be able to stick to the meal plan and the workouts because you want them to see results. If they're going to have results, they're much more likely to um, stay around for a second or third month, subsequent months on Shakeology. And that's what we want. We want to retain as many as we can. So the best way that we've found to be able to do that to help people to, to, to remain is to have in week one and week two of the 30 day challenge is to do a, a zoom like this with the challengers. Okay. Do a zoom with the challengers to, to talk about the meal plan and to walk through their questions that they've got on that. And you want to make sure that you give an opportunity for experienced and seasoned challengers to give their best practices to the brand new ones. Okay. And you want to be able to, 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 to give ideas. It doesn't need to be a long one, but it's like, okay, guys, here's some of the best practices in week one. Um, measurements, pictures. Um, even if you don't send them in, you got to take those. I want you to record those. Um, these are the best, my favorite meals, et cetera, et cetera. So that way they have the best chance for that. So they got to be converted to the, the trainers, Shakeology. And make sure that you understand how they're making Shakeology too because if they're shaking it and you don't know it, meaning in a cup, in a shaker cup, you want to know that because that's like recipe for – disaster. That's a recipe for HP cancellation. Is if, and so you got to know that, right? So you got to make sure that they're using the right recipes, they're preparing it the right way, that they're working out, that they are doing everything they can to, to love all of that. And then of course be socially committed. So once you have that, then that makes it easier to, to measure their activity level and their transformation, right? If you're, if you're focusing on that. And the way that you, Veronica, that you're going to help people transition is by making sure that um, you measure people's activity level and their transformation in the group and you're giving them shout, shout outs when they're active. A lot of times that's the difference between people um, sticking around and people not is how, how well they're doing because there's other wins in the group besides just losing weight. Okay. There's other, I mean, there, there, just, there simply is. You want them to understand that. So I would focus on those things. Uh, Veronica, as far as your challengers transition to become coaches, once they become coaches, um, what you really want them to focus on doing is learning how to use the five-step invitation process as quickly as possible. So as soon as they transition to become coach, you want to know who they're going to invite. You want to know a little bit about those people, and you want to make sure that you're, you're hand-holding every step of the way. Okay, today you're going to invite three people. Tomorrow you're going to invite another three people, and you're going to invite from this list of 50 people that you, that you have. Um, foremost are people who are going to – uh, who have noticed your transformation. Okay. So you want to make sure that your, again, your coaches are inviting your brand new coaches are inviting according to their list, but with the five step invitation process, and you want to make sure that you proof and, 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 and endorse the invitations that they send out. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's, right. how, you're gonna, that's how, that's how you're going to help convert more challenges to become coaches. And that's how you're going to help more of your coaches become emeralds is by making sure that you walk with them hand in hand on learning what they're actually saying when they invite people. Okay. So 
um, that's also the hazard. I mean, um, <clears throat> you know, there's a great balance between uh, a working coach and a discount coach. Okay. But for somebody who might be, uh, I'm probably going to be leaning more towards the side of discount coach. I'm not so sure about the working part of it. Train them, train them, train them, train them. Okay. And you don't, you can give them the permission to say, listen, we're not going to invite anybody. We're just going to, but I want you to be trained on, on, and know exactly what you might be saying no to because you want, you only want to be a discount coach. If that's the, if that's the case, that's totally cool. But I want you to know this is what coaching is about. And this is how it would help you. And in fact, in, in the conversation, when we, when we, in fact, when we upgrade people, challengers to become coaches, um, early in the year, we would hardly ever talk about the discount because what we wanted people to rely on was our training as the way for them to become a successful coach to have technology paid for and, and help other people. Okay, so it was like a working coach, they, our goal is to help them to, to, to find three people that they can put in a challenge group to get a transformation every month. That's our goal. We have the training and we're going to walk you through step-by-step -step training in order to help you get there. So if you give them an avenue and an opportunity to do that, although that might be scary and, but they're going to know and have reassurance that you're going to train them step-by-step -step on how to do that. That's key. So, so even on a discount coach, someone that, I mean, just wants the discount, that's it. Do you, how do you work that? Or do you just kind of, uh, I would, I'd that's a one-off, I mean, meaning you have to just kind of um, make, make a, a game time decision with them. Sorry, right? I didn't hear you. Sorry, some people are, you're going to have to just make the decision on a case-by-case -case basis. But if someone is like gun shy about um, inviting people and they're like, uh, I'm really nervous about this, they might be able to do it if they, if they had reassurance that you're going to provide training and you're going to do it step-by-step. -step. They might do it. But there's some people who are like, I don't care what you're talking about. I only want the discount. It's like, all right, that's cool. Then you just leave me, okay? Okay. So okay. if you're trying to, trying to transition to become that diamond coach, you've really got to dig in to make sure that you can retain your challengers because if you retain more challengers, you give yourself a greater opportunity to, to um, convert more challengers to become coaches. Your, co your, your coach prospect pool increases dramatically. But they've got to be able to be committed to Shakeology, the trainers, the programs, all that stuff, and be socially committed and converted to the people that they're in the challenge group with and the team as a whole. Okay. Thank you. That was great. I appreciate that. Okay. Sorry. That was a long one. And I hope you guys no, could like that was awesome. In. I took all the notes and questions down. I'm going to type them up in a doc for when people feel stuck. Cause sometimes as a leader, you're like, I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You're awesome. <laughs> I know. I know. And, and, and really those, those small transitions from the, the small transitions we have in coaching are simply just skill sets that bridge us from one, one season to the next. And we've got to be able to know what this, what, I mean, how effective or, or, or less effective someone is at a, at a particular skill. And once we know what to do to help them, then we can help them bridge that, bridge that transition. And here's the other thing too, for those of you who've got coaches and who've got coaches, especially who are coaches who are nervous and are, and are more fearful, okay, you have to one, in a conversation, remind them of their own transformation and the way their life has changed. Number two, let them know that people have been watching. Number three, let them know that if they'll trust you to stretch them, that by stretching them, they can take the next step in their journey as a coach. Just say, I, I just, I'm going to stretch you, but we're going to do this together. Okay. You've got to be willing to stretch. You've got to be willing to be a little bit uncomfortable, but we're going to do that together. And it's not going to be something you're going to have to do on your own. That transition and that, and asking permission to stretch them, to, to help them be okay with being uncomfortable. That's the same thing you did when they started the journey as a challenger. They were willing to, to let you stretch them emotionally so they'd stop eating rubbish physically so that they would push through being sore to yield results. And so you're asking them to do the same thing and transition to become a working coach by just being a little bit uncomfortable, but by doing it right by my side. It's easier to help someone to be, to, to do what's uncomfortable when you frame it that way. It's not always going to work, but it's easier to, to, to position that way, right? Okay, Veronica, good luck. Okay. Other questions? You're welcome. Anybody else have another question for Kobe? Okay. So can I just end with this and I'll turn, throw it back over to you, Chelsea? Is that cool? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So, um, 
be accountable to this, okay? Meaning if you're on this call and Emma and Chelsea are your leaders, get your own whiteboard and don't, don't think a thing if you don't have many people in these categories, okay? Don't think a thing about it. But, but be okay with where you are, okay? And the second thing is, okay, besides the first thing is being accountable to, to Chelsea and to Emma and, and, or your coach, okay, with this. But the second thing is, is make sure that you remember that your intention, what you think and what you feel, that all influences the behavior of others because they feel your mojo. They feel your positive energy. They feel your charisma and your belief in them. And that precedes their action, which precedes their success. Okay. And I can, I, I can tell you this very, very clear. I remember driving with Scotty Hobbs and his wife um, from the um, John Wayne airport in Santa Ana, California to leadership. This is like three years ago. And Scotty was, I think it was like a five star or something like that at the time. And I remember him, I remember asking him, how did you, how did you turn the corner? And he said, I remember being a diamond coach thinking I've got all these coaches who are stuck. And he said, I realized every night I needed to start visualizing them becoming a diamond coach. And so he said, I would, I would go back to the national wake up call and I would listen to Darren Ashby, like read the names off of all the diamonds. And I would replay that in my head as though he was saying their name. He said, every night I would just visualize them becoming a diamond coach. And I remember when he was talking, I was in the front seat in the, in the passenger seat and I turned around and I looked at Scotty right in his eyes and he had this Peter Pan look on his face. He was, and what I mean by that was he was in Neverland. He was in, he, he was in his own world and that world was a place that he had created first in his head and it manifested in his heart. And that's what influenced the behavior of everybody around him. He knew and he believed in what was going to happen before it actually took place. So I hope that you take away from this. Not only is this a way to organize your year and organize your people to be successful, but this is also a way for you to be visualizing people going from one category to the next category, to the next category, to the next category. Okay. Chelsea, I'm going to throw it back to you. Thank you so much. I love that visualization and what a great way to start off 2016. We can all get our boards and start visualizing the year ahead. And I love the Peter Pan example because I think we get stuck in, well, I don't know how that's going to happen. So it can never be, or you have to like know how to map everything out and you don't want this business. You can change it overnight just by believing in yourself. So, um, Kobe, thank you so much for the call. It was much needed. I know that it's going to be very well replayed and listened to throughout the whole team. We appreciate your time and Soar Nation. Have an amazing new year. We can't wait to hear all your goals and kick 2016 in the butt with all of you guys. So have a great night.